Kim Ruther, in blue, is out for a stroll with her friend Donna along the banks of the Peace River near Dunvegan. Kim grew up just an hour northwest of here on a homestead outside Worsley. Me and my two sisters were like wild coyotes. We just ran rampant through the countryside and riding horseback, and it's, it's a phenomenal way to grow up. Okay, ready, Johnny? Come on in. Back then, she had no intention of working in healthcare. I was going to be a phys ed teacher and an art teacher, but then my aunt Pat worked here in Fairview in diagnostic imaging, and she said, you know, not so many jobs for teachers, but x-ray is where it's at. Just this down. After two years of training in Edmonton and Calgary, she returned to Fairview. She's been practicing at the Fairview Health Complex for 36 years. In that time, she's x-rayed them all. Quad accidents, dirt bike accidents, MVAs, Excellent. kids falling off trampolines, skiing accidents, um, lots of skidooing accidents, industry yeah. accidents with farming. And a little bit over, just a hair. Take this rancher, for example. He was trampled by an 1,800-pound bull. It's really quite creative and artistic in the way that when you have a really serious injury, you're having to really try and figure out how you can get 90-degree angle views of a terrible, terrible injury without moving the patient or harming the patient. So it's, it's profoundly fun. One of Kim's greatest achievements was born out of tragedy. In 2012, her 16-year-old son named Brock went to his high school in Fairview for a volleyball practice. About half an hour later, one of the teachers phoned and said he'd collapsed, and so he collapsed and ended up dying of cardiac arrest on the gym floor. Even though there was an automated external defibrillator, or AED, at the school, it wasn't used on Brock. The teachers and the students that were there got the AED and put it beside them but weren't instructed to use it and had not really been trained or informed of the importance of having an AED applied rapidly. So instead of a 95% chance of survival, he went to a 0% chance of survival in the 10 or 13 minutes until the EMS got there. In such a life-changing event, one can get bitter or better. Kim chose better in a big way. As I started doing more research, I found all of these examples of kids around this region who had died of cardiac arrest at schools, at the pool, in Peace River, at hockey practice up north. I felt that it was really important to try and learn as much about what happened and do better so that we could try and change the outcome for the next young person that had a collapse. Kim created Project Brock in schools. Because if we start training our kids from when they're in kindergarten all the way through to grade 12, then they wouldn't have been like those kids that were standing there traumatized. They would have known immediately to start CPR and apply the AED. And so I thought the best way to do that would be to start putting AEDs in schools and training kids. And so that's what we did. Our school, E.E. E. Oliver, became the first school to receive an AED from Project Brock. It came with Kim. Um, she came and showed up with um, training for our staff. She practiced drills with us and um, she said, okay, uh, you know where it is, I'm gonna time you. Had you know staff thinking, we're not allowed to run in the hallway and we were running in the hallway because we were learning that we needed to be quick in order to save a life. Kim visited all the schools in the region to train the students CPR and the use of AEDs. She also influenced 911 protocols for emergency dispatchers so that they now instruct bystanders to put on AEDs in an emergency situation. Those changes took place not only in Canada, but as far away as New Zealand, reaching over 29,000 dispatchers worldwide. It led to changes for dispatchers to improve locating and retrieving the closest AED. Kim is an advocate for rural health care even in her own family. One daughter is a sonographer and the other a nurse practitioner. They both hosted skill stations at an RPAP-sponsored skills event in Fairview. 
She was over at my house the other night actually and my son's girlfriend came in the room and they visited for a few minutes and she said, hey, have you ever thought about being an x-ray tech? You should think about doing that and said, hey, come and spend a day with me. Come spend an hour with me at, at work. You, you'll see, it'll, you'll love it. It's the best job in the world. She regularly invites students to her workplace to show what a diagnostic imaging technologist does and she is a preceptor for Nate student technologists as part of their field training. The nice thing about working with students is it humbles us and makes us realize how much we don't know and how much we still have to learn, which is so valuable. Even after years and years as an x-ray tech, I find that students still teach me every single day. Kim is an accomplished artist. She loves painting with watercolors, doing stone carving and pottery. She has volunteered for the Fairview Fine Arts Centre, as well as dozens of other organizations, including the local Health Professionals Attraction and Retention Committee. She's very passionate. Uh, she knows so much in the healthcare industry that she brings a really great perspective. She is loved by both those she works with and those in her community. Super helpful, very genuine person. She always makes everyone feel at ease. Kim's always very pleasant, uh, easy to work with, very personable, patients always love her. When I was uh, putting out the invites to our Health Professional Enhancement Committee, we're, we're calling the event for the health of it. When I mentioned that Kim's receiving an award, it's funny because they're like, oh, that's nice, you guys are having a little event. Kim's getting an award, we wanna come, right? <laughs> so she is just, she's very loved in this community. After 36 years as a diagnostic imaging technologist, why is she even more passionate about her practice today than when she first began? I think that because there's been so many life experiences that I've had myself, with my family, with my kids, injuries, with the death of my son, they just bring to the forefront how important we are, like how critical healthcare providers are. It's made me more passionate to make sure that, that I try and do a really good job for every single patient and care for them like they are my own. Congratulations to Kim Ruther, recipient of the 2022 RPAP Rhapsody Healthcare Heroes Award. Thank you for all you do for rural health care and for visiting roosters. One of our locum doctors has a pet chicken. He would like to bring the chicken here, of course, because it, it is a pet. Doing that is difficult. Uh, it's hard to find a place that will take a chicken. That rooster was out walking around and I said, you know, my backyard is right here. You can put it in my backyard. And it was delightful until it wasn't. Really? He got up on the deck and then was chasing me back into the house every time I came out. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, she just befriends everybody that she knows and is willing to do anything for anyone, including keeping their chicken for them while they're here doing a locum. 